Good afternoon. My name is Gareth McFadden. I am minister in this church, and I assure you of a warm welcome to Kilbride this afternoon. I express on the family's behalf their appreciation of your support to them at this time of Martha's passing. And it is my prayer that we would all know God's comfort during this service today. Death is a shattering experience for us, and we need to turn to the one who is steadfast and everlasting. We do that today. You're invited after the service uh, to share refreshments in our hall, and also after the committal, which will take place at Ballyclare Cemetery. In relation to that, I ask if you are going along to the cemetery, that you return to the hall immediately following the burial in order to be with those who have gone straight into the hall after the service. As we begin, uh, those who we have other connections with will not realise that we are in a church building in a service of worship necessarily. And so I ask if you have a mobile phone in your pocket, Please ensure that it is off or in silent mode before we begin. We open our time together by turning our hearts to God in worship. Truly one of the greatest thoughts we can have is remembering God's care for us. Like sheep depending on their shepherd for all their needs, whether we realize it or not, we depend on God. And it is important for us in these moments that we remind ourselves that we indeed depend on God for our needs. And those who follow the Lord God are those who celebrate his care and his love. Let us sing of that as we use the well-known words of the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd.
please be seated. We are assisted in the pastoral life of our congregation by having the services of Reverend James Tosh, who keeps in very regular contact with many of our elderly members, including Martha. And it is very appropriate that he leads us in a portion of today's service and later at the graveside. And so, James, I invite you forward to lead us in prayer and to read. Today we come to give thanks for Martha's life and for those of us who knew her reasonably well over the last wee while, she probably will be standing behind us here and saying, get a cup of tea. (laughs) I don't know how many times she had said that recently in the nursing home that seemed to be very much on her mind. Lovely lady and it's only but right that we come to give thanks and to celebrate her life. Let us join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this afternoon, we want to thank you for your love that is beyond all we can think, ask, or imagine. We praise you for your tender mercies, which are new every morning. We rest in your all-sufficient grace, which you show us hour by hour, moment by moment. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care and your concern for each and every one of us. Father God, you know what overwhelms us. You know when we feel anxious or when we are afraid. You also know when we hurt in body or in mind. And so we come to you now to know your love, your mercy and your peace. And we also come to find strength in you, that strength that will enable us to move forward in faith because we know your fatherly care. Father, thank you that you remain the same forever. Thank that you are ever perfect in your justice, in your holiness, in your power, and in your love. Because you love us, Father. You sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into this world to be our Saviour. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did give your life for us. But we also thank you that you rose again. And even now, you're the one who continues to intercede for us before your Father's throne in heaven. Lord Jesus, when you were here upon earth, you experienced grief and sorrow at the loss of a loved one. And so, Lord, you know the sorrow within our hearts at this time. And, Lord, we want to commit each other to you, all those who have known the passing of a loved one in these recent days. Father, thank you that because you love us with an everlasting love, you can turn the shadow of death into the joy of the morning. So help us now to wait upon you with reverent and with submissive hearts. O Lord, in the silence of this hour, speak to us about eternal things. Be with us as we share together the passages of Scripture that have been chosen. And as we listen to these familiar words, may we be filled with hope, renewed hope. And may we indeed be lifted above this time of darkness and distress 
And Lord, in your love, we ask that you would bring us into your eternal light and into your eternal peace. And Father God, we ask all this now in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> one of the passages especially chosen for today comes from one of Paul's letters, the letter which he wrote to the church in Corinth. I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Love is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. James, thank you. We're now going to have contributions from members of Martha's family. We're going to have two poems entitled Legacy of Love and I Made It Home. And then we're going to have a reading from the scripture again, uh, from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. And I invite Katie and Carol and Gary uh, to come forward and to present their contributions, each one in turn at this stage. A mother, a sister, and a grandma too. This is the legacy we have from you. You taught us love and how to fight. You give us strength, you give us might. A stronger person would be hard to find, and in your heart you were always kind. You fought for all of us in one way or another, not just as a sister, not just as a mother. For all of us, Give your best, and now the time has come for you to rest. So go in peace, you've earned your sleep. Your love in our hearts will forever keep. I just wanted to let you know that I made it home. Everything is so pretty here, so white, so fresh, so new. I wish that you could close your eyes so you could see it too. Please try not to be sad for me. Try to understand. God has taken care of me. I'm in the shelter of his hand. Here there is no sadness, no sorrow and no pain. Here there is no crying and I'll never hurt again. Here it is so peaceful when all the angels sing. I really have to go now. I've just got to try my wings. P.S. I'll be the first face you see when you get here. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They give, they give out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything, all that she had to live on. Amen. 
May God bless these readings. In particular, we remember this reading of the widow, asking that the Lord God would help us to give all we have. Amen. Well done to Katie and to Carol and to Gary. It's not easy when your emotions are so tender to stand before others and read as they did, but did so very well. Martha was born on the 12th of January, 1947, a sixth child and a first daughter to Annie and James Elliot. She was raised along with John, James, Thomas, William, Samuel, Robert, Anne, Sarah, and Agnes. Home was known as White Nye at Sandy Bray's Tildard Road. Life was simple for her family, in particular when her father died when Martha and her siblings were still very young. She attended school at Tardry until leaving for work aged 14. And she then went to work in the old green mill in Kells. Martha met Lexi at an Orange Hall dance and they married on the 20th of June 1970, taking a honeymoon to Scotland. They settled as a couple and then were blessed in June 1971 with the arrival of Rodney. And they were living together in Bally Easton for a number of years before moving to Clareville Park in Ballyclare in 1973. And the second son, Gary, came along in 1980. Lexi died in 1988, leaving Martha to care for her two young boys. She lived 34 years as a widow. And she cared well for her boys. She cared very well for her boys. She did all that she could, providing for their needs, cooking their meals. And, and she did well at this, although uh, I am led to believe she was known to have had a few kitchen disasters in her days. And she might have presented a black burned pizza and then with a smile say that she near missed it. <laughs> but of course, their needs were properly looked after. And I think it's very telling how she looked after the needs of her sons whenever unprompted Gary suggested to me that Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44, be part of the service today. The story of a widow who gave all that she had. That is what Martha had to do. The widow in the story didn't have much, and when compared to others with their large amounts that they were bringing to the temple as an offering, what she brought might have seemed insignificant, so small, so poor. But she gave from her heart, and she gave all she had, and so she is set before us as an example in this story Jesus told. Martha at times might not have thought that what she had was much, but she gave what she had for her family. She used her caring skills by working as a home help, then working in the nursing home, and she brought home this income for her family. Of course, Jesus told the story of the widow's offering to remind us of how we are to approach God. That's the point. We are to approach God with all our heart. And you might respond to that comment from me by saying, well, what would I have that I could possibly bring to God that would be of any good to him? And the widow was put before us as an example, if that's the question that comes from you. It is the sincerity and the wholeness of our heart coming in worship that God desires. And so the widow in the story 
is contrasted to some richer people who might have looked like they gave plenty, but it was a, so, such a small fraction of what they had, and they didn't bring their whole heart to God, but the widow did. And so Jesus says that her giving to God was much richer, much better, much fuller. And so it's a story of how we come to God. And we can also learn from the story how we respond to others. For it can apply there too. Do we give what we have from our heart? Martha did. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which we also had read by James, shows us what the Apostle Paul knows of what love is like. We are to be not giving our love only because it benefits us. We can so easily in our modern society, which is so focused on me, desire someone to love us. But the Apostle Paul is telling us that love is to be for the other. It is not to be self-seeking. That's the phrase. It is not proud or rude or self-seeking. It does not delight in evil. It rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Love like this. Martha showed love to her husband, Lexi, to her sons, to their families. She cared for the needs of her mother and her brother, Tommy. And she and Gary moved to Clare Heights in 1994 to be with her mother and Tommy there. She showed what she knew. As 1 Corinthians 12 puts it, love is not self-seeking. Martha cared for Tommy until October 2022 when she herself was needing cared for because she was ill. But even when she knew she was ill, even when she was conceding to family that she was ill, her concern was more about Tommy than herself. The widow who gave all she had. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Please don't imagine I'm setting Martha before you as perfection, for she would chastise me for doing that. But she is an example to us, I think, of showing love. Especially that nature of it. It is not self-seeking. Martha enjoyed being part of this church. She was especially a key member in the Bulls. She readily made friends here. She was good at bowls. By the way, she played for Bally Easton, Kilbride and Ballinure, and also played in the East Antrim zone. And I'm sure the nights that she was at bowls had a laugh. She had a good laugh, didn't she? And I'm sure those of us who know Martha well will remember her wide smile and her laugh. She had her own special ways, and her fun nature shone through, didn't it? Some elements of her fun nature. On one occasion, she climbed Slemish with others. I don't know why she did this. It wasn't explained to me, but she was up there anyway. And she decided it was better to descend Slemish on her backside instead of on her feet. 
And so she went all the way down that way. And she claimed her backside was never the same since. I don't know what started this idea of descending hills in a strange fashion, but I'm also told of a story where Rodney started her rolling sideways down the slope at the Silent Valley, and she couldn't get stopped, so she squealed her whole way down, rolling. I can imagine the noise of her doing that. Martha liked having her children, their friends, and her grandchildren around. And I witnessed this. I saw her face light up when they came in. One day recently when I was visiting, I thought she was asleep. I think she might have been pretending to be asleep because she had got tired of talking to me. Because whenever the grandchildren came in, she woke up instantly, looked at them all and said, what are you all doing here? And a big wide smile. Because they were there. And there was all of a sudden fresh energy. Her sense of fun. Her sense of fun was strong. And even as she aged, and even as age and illness brought with it weaknesses, she still had that sense of fun. I can't get over that she just not that long ago got her first tattoo for the fun of it. I wouldn't have thought she needed any, but she got one. And she also was showing the grandchildren how to trampoline a few years ago. This is the mischievous nature of somebody who gave her heart and soul and her fun nature into life. Isn't this how you remember her? Love giving. Fun loving. People loving. We see a pattern of love giving in the Bible. We are called to show it. We are called also to receive it. We're called to receive it from God, for that's the purest source of love. We see the most perfect form of love giving in the life of Jesus. He lived for others. Although the Son of God, he lived to serve and help others. He came to love us. He suffered and died for us. As the Bible explains, all those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. His love was uniquely pure. The ultimate model for us to emulate, and more than a model to emulate, the Savior to trust. The Lord God knows our hearts and he knows what we need. He knows if we have received from him through faith. He knows the grief that lies within us. He has already reached out in love to us and he wishes us to reach out to him. He welcomes those who, although grieving, look to God for hope. Jesus the Saviour, the one we can trust for that future hope, speaks of the future destiny of those who trust in him. He says in John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. We have been reminded today that we will all leave this earth. And until the Lord Jesus returns, this will be so for us all. How important and good it is to remember that welcome the Lord God gives to us all. To receive from him the promise of everlasting life through faith. We remember Martha today with gladness, with sadness, and with a reminder to us all to live our lives in a way that shows love, to live our lives in a way that receives God's love. Let us turn to God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for Martha's life among us, for the the things she said, for her wide smile, for her laugh, for her fun ways, for her little sayings, so many of them. For the way that she always sought for people to be cared for. We ask that you would draw near to her family who grieve her loss. We ask for your comfort on those who, loving her deeply, feel the loss deepest of all. We pray for your help and strength to be with her sons, Rodney with Carol and Gary with Louise. May you also grant peace and reassurance to Martha's grandchildren. And we pray for your comfort to be with her surviving siblings and their families. Lord, might James and William and Robert and Anne and Agnes know your love. And we pray the same for the families and all those connected to her predeceased siblings, John, Samuel, Sarah, and Tommy. Lord, grant to this family so recently bereaved with the passing of Tommy and now again with Martha, the everlasting arms of the loving Heavenly Father. Might you be the solid foundation of this family. May you be where consolation and hope is found. And grant to us all, Lord, the wisdom as we have heard today to come to you, the living God, seeking help and hope and life everlasting. For all these things are found in Jesus. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. And so we sing the second of our two hymns, chosen by Martha herself. What a friend we have in Jesus.
Lord God, for all good things we give you thanks. For the gift of life, for the gift of eternal life found in Jesus, for family, for friendship. We also remember to thank you for the refreshments that have been provided here today, asking that you would bless what we eat and drink and time spent with one another. And now, may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>